Hello everyone, in this video we will discuss about renal cell carcinoma. So renal cell carcinoma is also known as hypernephroma or Gravitz tumor and it mostly occurs in older individuals, usually between 6 to 7 decade of life and males are slightly more affected than the females. In this video we will discuss about the types of tumor, we will discuss about the risk factors and the morphology of RCC. Going to firstly the risk factors, one of the most important risk factor is tobacco smoking. Others are obesity, hypertension, unopposed estrogen therapy, especially in females, then exposure to asbestos, petroleum products, and heavy metals. Some familial syndromes are also associated with RCC, especially von Hippel Lindau syndrome is one of the most important uh, familial syndrome to be associated. We will discuss about this briefly in this video. Now going to the types, uh, the clinical features firstly. Now the clinical features, there are three classical diagnostic features of RCC. One is the costovertebral pain, second is the palpable mass and lastly is the hematuria. And this one, hematuria is the most important one. This hematuria can be intermittent in nature, can be microscopic in nature. Because it is microscopic, sometimes the diagnosis is delayed. Now, the patient can also present with paraneoplastic syndrome because renal cell carcinoma are known. This carcinoma is known to produce number of paraneoplastic syndrome including the polycythemia, <coughs> hypercalcemia, hypertension, Cushing syndrome and amyloidosis. So, patient can present with these features also. Now, going to the types of tumor. There are many types of tumor. There is clear cell carcinoma, then there is papillary cell carcinoma, then there is chromophobe cell variety. Firstly, we will discuss about clear cell carcinoma. This is the most common type, accounts for around 70 to 80 percent of renal cell carcinoma. As the name suggests, that it is composed of cells which are having, uh, which have clear cytoplasm. So, in this picture, as you can see, you can see the cytoplasm is very clear or sometimes it is slightly granular but mostly it is clear. Now going to the pathology uh, behind this uh, clear cell carcinoma. Uh, the pathology behind this, uh, the genetics behind it is uh, uh, that it is associated with loss of sequence of chromosome number 3. So you have to understand that this chromosome number 3, it contains a gene which is known as VHL gene. And this uh, deletion, this loss of sequence is responsible for VHL syndrome. Now what is VHL syndrome? VHL syndrome is an autosomal dominant syndrome. It has uh, patients have clear cell carcinoma of uh, kidney and apart from that they also have hemangioangioblastoma of retina or cerebellum there are cysts of pancreas liver and kidneys and clear cell tumors of other sites also and very important pheochromocytoma is also uh, present this is independently a very important topic to discuss so we will not go in detail now, uh, because in clear cell carcinoma, we have already discussed that there is loss of VHL gene. This VHL gene is actually a tumor suppressor gene and it encodes a protein. Now, VHL gene, it encodes a protein which is responsible for degradation of other proteins. And one of the important target of VHL protein is the hypoxia inducible factor 1. Now, because this is this HIF1 is not being degraded, now this will increase in number. It will increase in quantity. Now, when it is increased in quantity, it has its own effects. Now, this leads to increase in the proangiogenic proteins like VEGF, PDGF, and because these are increased, there is increase in angiogenesis. Also, Insulin like growth factor is also increased which leads to increase in cell growth. Now because both cell growth and angiogenesis they are stimulated this will lead to a tumor formation. Now going to other varieties. There is papillary cell carcinoma. We will not discuss the genetics of it in detail but it is not associated with any 3P deletions and is associated with mostly trisomies. 
like of 7, 16 and 17. Now papillary cell carcinoma as the name suggests has papillary growth pattern and sometimes samoma bodies can be seen in this type of tumor. We will discuss the morphology later on. Now other two tumors are chromophobe and collecting duct carcinoma. Going to the morphology. Firstly going to the gross morphology. Now in gross morphology we can see in this kidney. So the, the RCC it is known to affect the poles of the kidney. It Here we can see it is affecting the upper pole. Now it is mostly it is spherical in shape and it distorts the shape of the kidney. It is limited to the renal capsule mostly but it distorts the shape of the kidney. Now it has a special appearance which is known as variegated appearance. Now what is a variegated appearance? Variegated appearance means there is variations in the color. So, it has a yellow color inside it which is a consequence of lipid accumulation in the tumor cells and there are large areas of necrosis, of ischemia and of hemorrhagic discoloration. So, there is variation in the appearance which is known as variegated appearance. Now, this was the gross morphology. Now, uh, uh, continuing with the gross morphology, there, there is renal vein invasion which is a very important part uh, of uh, gross uh, morphology in RCC. Now the renal cell carcinoma is known to invade the ureter, the renal vein also. Now in renal vein it grows as a solid column of cells and sometimes the solid column of cell, the solid co continuous cord of tumor can reach from renal vein up till the inferior vena cava and then these thrombi and these uh, invasion can reach up to right side of the heart. Now going to the histology, the microscopy, firstly the clear cell carcinoma which was the most important, most common variety. Now here we can see <coughs> the growth pattern, it varies from solid to trabecular or sometimes tubular. The tumor cells, they have a characteristic shape which is known as polygonal shape. So this is the polygonal shape. Now uh, we can see over here this tumor. This is a polyglonal shape and has abundant clear or granular cytoplasm. Mostly the tumors are well differentiated. Uh, they are almost uh, uh, having same morphology. There is no nuclear atypia mostly. But in sometimes uh, marked nuclear atypia with bizarre nuclear or giant cells can be seen and which is uh, important for the prognosis. Now going to the papillary carcinoma. Uh, in the papillary carcinoma, you can see there are numerous papillae. It will have a central blood vessel. So, uh, it's a true papillae. Their samoma bodies can be present. And the stroma is highly vascularized. We are not discussing the other variants. However, however, the chromophobe cell variant has a very eosinophilic appearance. You can see this is the chromophobe cell variety. We can see this is the clear cell variety. You can appreciate the difference. And we can see there it is form, It is present in tubules and has a clear cytoplasm. Okay. Uh, this was uh, about the renal cell carcinoma. Do ask any queries regarding this topic in the comment box. Do like, share and subscribe to this channel if you like these type of videos. Thank you.